five minutes past three. Let's talk to Ricky Gervais. He's on the set of his new comedy, Life's Too Short. Ricky, good afternoon. Hello, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Where are you right now? Well, um, I can't tell you exactly. It's an undisclosed um, location. It's a disused air force, actually, and it's really weird because it's like thousands of an- a- uh, acres of this place and it's like just derelict where all the buildings were and all the houses and and it's really weird it's it's strange it's like there's been sort of nuclear explosion and i'm the only person alive (laughs) well me and me and about 25 dwarves and um (laughs) loads of cameramen um so it's fantastic yeah you and 25 dwarves are the only people that survived a nuclear winter effectively (laughs) exactly yeah Uh, we have to start again no, it's not. It's not about that. No, it's, um, it's uh, a fake documentary um, about uh, Warwick Davis, uh, who is uh, um, uh, a real person in real life, in films like uh, Willow and, and Star Wars and all those. And um, the premise is that he's making this fake documentary to try and get his career back on track. He's going through a messy divorce. He's got a big tax bill, and um, he's a bit of a shyster. And he runs an agency where he sort of rips off the other dwarves, and it's following his life. Really, sort of, it's a cross between The Office and Extras. So it's very natural, and it's it, you know, it's a it's a, like a modern fake documentary, um, but it's got a backdrop to like show business. And um, myself and Stephen Murch are in it. Uh, uh, we're playing. Uh, sort of twisted versions of ourselves that people keep bothering to, for work. He comes around saying he's doing more extras, and uh, yeah. you're going to see a few old faces pop up from our previous shows, The Office and Extras. Who? And, um, Which ones? I'm not going to tell you. And oh, I'm please. Not tell you the, well, someone leaked that Johnny Depp's in it, and there's a few more of that calibre as well, but we're not going to leak it. I'll tell you the reason we're not going to leak it. Some, I mean, I'm sure it'll get out there anyway, eventually, but we're a little bit worried with extras, because I think people remember extras for all the big Hollywood stars we had in it and that's that's great and it was amazing that we had those people in it of course but it wasn't really about that it was it was a uh, you know it was about some normal people's lives and um uh, we want people to concentrate on what the show's about and these are bonuses we've got some amazing people lined up but um we don't really uh, we don't want to put, put the emphasis on that you don't want um, it to overshadow it well even though you don't want that to happen um please just 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 consider giving us one other name uh Oh, um, no, I can't. No, I, I can't. Okay. I'll tell you what, Go, when, what? When, when, if anything, uh, if it looks like it, you'll be first. Okay. I'll, <laughs> you'll be the first to know. Thank you. When you so, Ricky, whenever I've spoken to you before, uh, when you've talked about writing the office and extras, you've always talked about how important it is to write about what you know. So you worked in an office, you were at the office, and then you spend a lot of time on TV sets, so you wrote extras. What do you know about the lives of dwarves? I know a lot now. Through, uh, you know, we, we were searching. You know, we're, um, Warwick actually uh, came to the office and said, you know, I think this would be a uh, my, my life would be a good subject, and that's that's often true. You know, everyone says, oh, you should do a, a, a sitcom about you know cab drivers if they're a cab driver, or you should do it about my factory of it, and they're right. It's just how it's done, really. So we use that as a. Um, you know, uh, uh, I suppose a, 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 a starting point, but there's nothing as tantalising as real life. I, I love blurring that line between, uh, you know, reality and, and, and fiction. And um, you know, and uh, the most flattering thing I ever heard was that when The Office first came, some people thought it was a real documentary for the first few minutes, which is exactly the aim. So we love doing that. And I think realism, the real of something is, the more it pays back. So, uh, um, you know, it's it's got those sensibilities of, of the office. And, um, you know, the other thing about it is the office wasn't really about selling paper in Slough. It was about people thrown together in their lives. It was about a, a man having a midlife crisis. It was about two people being, you know, being um, getting together. Just like Extras. Extras wasn't really about media. It was about some a few people having a struggle in life, trying to get off that bottom rung of the ladder. So Dad's Army wasn't really about the war. It was about a group of people that are already thrown in and they, you know, try again, trying to do something with their lives, that, that struggle. So yeah, everything's yeah. about that, really. And this, this, his struggle is that not only is he three foot six and with a tax bill, a messy divorce, um, but, of course, it's that, it's that added thing of that, that camera again, that just like David Brent thought, this has sought me out, just like all those people that go on 
X Factor and th these things, and they think their life is going to be sorted if yeah. they just get on telly. These people who do documentaries about themselves live in their life like an open wound, and they think the papers are going to love me now, and of course it goes terribly wrong. So it's all about those things, anxiety, angst, um, ego, all those things that uh, everyone knows about. So um, yeah. uh, that, 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 that's where the comedy comes from, that, that sort of, um, that desperation, that angst, and people... Uh, all the all the greatest characters, like from, you know, uh, uh, Captain Mannering, Tony Hancock, Basil Forty, they've all got the blind spot. Yeah. They all think they're something they're not, and they all perceive themselves differently to the way the rest of the world perceives them. And that uh, that's just such a comedy staple, really. Yeah, did, yeah that's what Brent was. What did the comedy Brent was the gap between the gap between what he thought he was and what everyone else thought he was. Exactly. And the strange thing was that David Brent was. He was all right, really, but his biggest mistake, he sort of mistook um, popularity for respect. And that was like, again, that's what people do. They think, oh, if I'm famous, then, then, I'll be, then my life will be brilliant. Um, oh. So it's that, uh, really. Uh, with the, with the, uh, you, you started filming this week. I think you started filming on Monday. Um, yeah. Just tell us a bit about how it's been going. You've been, you've been pleased with it so far. Well, I've been keeping a, a thing on my blog, actually, and um, as I said last night, it's going too well. <laughs> I'm worried that there's, that there's not film in the camera or something, because it's, it's going great, and um, uh, we've really hit the ground running like we've never been away. So, um, and, and me and Steve think it's the out-and-out -out funniest thing we've done. Do you? I suppose we've left away, we've left behind that sort of, um, the, some of the drama of extras. We've left away some of the sort of romance and poignance and... I suppose, um, pathos of The Office. So it's much more, you know, funny things happening. Like a modern documentary, they just cut to the, you know, what, what was funny, well, this guy, what, what he wanted to do and what happened. So um, it, it's, it's, even though it looks still sort of very postmodern and all that, it's, it's, quite, it's quite traditional in the sense that it's just funny. It, we're just going right. for comedy this time. Sounds great. I mean, you've done, obviously, a couple of films. Some of your most recent projects have been, have been films. Is it quite... Uh, enjoyable, quite exciting to get getting back to making television, to getting back to um, doing a sitcom. Uh, well, I never went away. It was just it, it just happened that I did all my TV in one block, then I did like three movies in a row. But I've never. We've always wanted to get back to this once we had a good idea. We didn't do things for the sake of it. Television's great, and I think television now um, it, it's there's there's much more scope for you know exploring the pure art of it with films. There's so many people involved. They have like discussion groups. They have there's so much money that it's like there's a there's you know unless you're really careful you know uh, it's like a, a some sort of democracy and then they worry about stuff and they pull it if it's they're doing well. So with something like HBO, things like The Sopranos and The Wire, they would they would never have been made as films. You know, yeah. um, they can really care about you know people getting into it. You know those. Uh, they don't care about anything other than is it a good program. So I, I, I'm I'm pretty faithful to, to TV. I've never been one of these things that uh, thought you know that that's the end of TV now. Um, so uh, it, it's great to be back, and it's quick. It's more immediate, um, and uh, you you know you can you can do a lot more I think with with TV because um, you've got you've got seven weeks to tell a story as opposed to an hour and a half. You know the people yeah. are worrying about people getting bored in the cinema or going to see another cinema. It's crazy. They worry about the lengths of things. They've got to get four showings in. With TV, you know, you can you, you can do what you want, which is which is just so liberating. There was a brilliant bit in the Times at the weekend about how uh, television creatively has now completely uh, completely overtaken Hollywood. Um, I want to tell yeah, you, definitely. In terms of the, having the fake documentary look, so will it look a bit like The Office? So you've got your documentary yeah. cameras there, and will individual yeah. characters do their sort of into their individual interviews in the way the characters did in The Office? Exactly. They'll be talking. Their story it's sort of a slightly more modern version of the office because because um uh, you know documentaries have moved on documentaries are a little bit faster now um uh and uh i think that if if, if the if the office was a spoof of like 80s and 90s documentary this is this is um you know uh, you can see more uh, uh, of these things like the osbournes and um you know, Kerry Katona is a little bit more influence of that, of people willing to live their lives like an open wound to get somewhere in life. They're doing it for a reason, you know? Yeah. There, was a, there was a lovely naivety about those, all those um, documentaries of the 80s and 90s where normal people being followed, but they thought nothing would come of it. They weren't showing off because they just thought 
it was just, and then when people started becoming overnight successes and and sort of like famous for 10 minutes people started doing them to be famous and um there's been a lot more of that lately so uh there's, there's a slight more there's slightly more of an edge to it and yeah. you and you reference earlier people that, that that go on all these sort of talent shows and use them as a shortcut to to fame and then you know kind of think that fame will make them happy these programs like the X Factor and Britain's Got Talent is, is on telly with all its live shows this week. Do you watch all of those shows? Uh, not anymore. I must say I did. I was, you know, the first, the first season of Big Brother, um, I was fascinated when I thought it was a, like a true social experiment. But then, you know, after the first few, people were going in and thinking, right, if I stay for this weekend, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk out on a Friday because then I can get 100 grand for the news of the world. <laughs> and it's suddenly, it's sort of like, you know, it, what we were watching them doing something for their career is like, why do we care? And, you know, same, some of the X Factors, you know, now I watch shows like Tana, and uh, it's like the ones that are wheeled out, the bewildered people that are wheeled up for us to laugh at, they come back at the end, you know, it's, it seems all too produced and contrived. And, um, mm. uh, but um, I, I must admit, yeah, I, I was fascinated by those things at the beginning. And I just sort of watch them less now because I don't think I can get anything from them anymore. I think they've... Um, they, yeah. they've uh, You've got you the know, joke. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, you, good news. You were, you were describing the outline of, of, of Life's Too Short because uh, we're talking to you on the set of Life's Too Short. And uh, Barry, hero, boxing hero Barry McGuigan was laughing his head off as you described the premise. Oh, excellent! Is he there? I'm, I'm sitting, listening to you, Richie. I, 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 I can't, I can't tell you how interesting you are. I love to listen to you just all night long. You're, Thank you very much. You give a, give a great perspective on life and 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 uh, fame and celebrity, isn't it? Isn't it horrible sometimes? And and what people will do. He's for, very wise, for isn't he? He's brilliant. It's, it's, it's absolutely uh, brilliant. It's, it's, it's a subject I'm fascinated with, and uh, I, I tell you when. Andy Warhol, he could never have known how prophetic his statement was that yeah. in the future everyone would be famous for 15 minutes. I mean, <laughs> it's it got right. There was a, I, I told you this before, I think that there was a survey recently amongst 10 year olds um, and they were asked what they wanted to be when they grew up and they said famous. <laughs> Just that, that'll do. I'm being called, yeah. they're getting angry at me. I've got to go back. All I've right, got, listen, got... Ricky, let's talk to you again on the set sometime and, and okay. please let us know how it's going. Well done, Ricky. Good Thanks. luck with Thanks, it. Thanks, everyone. Thank Cheers. you, Ricky. Bye-bye. Bye. There's Ricky Gervais. He's talking to us on the set of Life's Too Short, his new comedy with Warwick Davis.